Okay crafters, hopefully you saw part one in this short video series on using aluminum soda cans or beer cans to create projects on your Cricut or with your die cutting machines and with your embossing folders. And so I've already done part one and that was simply showing you my method for cutting out these aluminum blanks from the aluminum cans. So go ahead and check out video number one if you want to see how I prepared these so that we can move on to step two which is cutting these out using my Cricut and I'm just going to show you um, how to put it on the mat, how to create something in design space that's the right size and then how to make sure you have the right material settings and then show you this running through the Cricut so you can actually see the results. So let's go ahead and take one of these blanks and when you're looking here, I'm going to tape this down. Now, in design space, um, I want to have this taped so I have tape running around the edges here. I can bring it all the way up to the zero if I want, but I just don't like the tape to be too close to the edge. So I'm going to bring it down and work one inch down, and that just helps me when I'm going into the machine settings to know where to set my design on the mat. I'll show you that when we get in design space. but. It, it, this is an old mat. It sticks a little bit, but it's not great. So I'm actually just going to use some painter's tape to hold down all of my edges. If I can get that started, there we go. Now I do like to just barely cover the can because I want some good usable space on there. But I do want that edge covered and be careful just very slowly and nicely smooth that across just in case you have a sharp edge there you don't want to be running your fingers quickly along the metal especially before it's been cut out with the Cricut because if you've just used the scissors like I have there can be some rough edges still and I don't want you cutting yourselves you could use gloves gloves would not be a bad idea you can see I'm covering the entire edge and all the way through the sides. And this has some little ripples in here. Don't worry about that. It's going to cut through this just fine. Okay, one more little piece here and our mat will be prepped. And I took note of where my measures were at the one inch mark here and this goes to the nine inch mark. So your workspace on these cans, if, if it's a regular 12 ounce can, is about eight, eight inches across, so you wanna be less than eight inches, and about three and, a, and three quarter inches long. So if you wanna keep your design to maybe three and a half or three and a quarter by about seven and a half inches max, that's great. Now, I wanna run my, some of my designs through embossing folders. These, I have some by Doris, I have, I don't know if I say that right, some from the paper source. And these are, let's see, I'm not even sure. They're about four inches wide and about six inches long, a little under that actually. So if you want to, you're, you're wide enough here, you're fine to go into these folders, but you also want to be aware that you don't want something that's super long if you want to do some embossing, which will be in video number three. So just keep that in mind as far as sizing your designs. Okay, our mat is prepped. We're going to go into design space now and find something fun to create, and we'll come back and cut it out on the mat. So now that we have our aluminum can taped down to our mat, we need to come in here to Cricut Design Space. And I'm going to come over here, and I've already been playing with several projects to cut out with the aluminum cans, but I'm just going to show you this first one. Whoops, click it once, and we'll open that up. And I'm going to come down here to customize so I can show you the settings. So this is the design that I created. I believe it was free, but I do have Cricut access, so I may have have had access to the airplane because of that and I'm sorry I just can't remember at this point but come in and make your design remember to keep it within a certain amount of space so this design is about three and a quarter inches um, three and a quarter inches wide and about five inches tall so I'm gonna go ahead everything I need to do here is set up I can see that I just have the one cut file so it's going to cut the outside it's going to cut the airplane shape 
So we're going to go ahead and click on Make It. Now here's where I'm going to have to do a little adjusting. So it automatically will line it up um, upright in the profile position and I need to turn it because my can is going the other way. So we're going to turn that sideways. And then I placed the can at that one inch mark was where it started and there's a little bit of tape there as well. So I'm just going to bring it this design into that corner. And I'm not going to bring it all the way up. I need a little bit of room. And I don't know why I thought that when you lined stuff up, they showed you if it was lined up evenly or not, but that's fine. It will still cut out just fine. It's the can is coming from this space here. So I'm on top of where that can is going to be. So I'm not really worried about that. Now I'm going to click on continue. Now I'm already connected to my machine. You need to be connected to your machine to get to this point. And typically what will come up is on the materials it will say popular. So what I did is I went in and made a special setting for the aluminum cans. So I already have that in my favorites. So <clears throat> my setting is what I'm going to use. But let me show you how I did that. If you click on browse all materials you can look for materials but you can't make any adjustments but if you come down to this little button here material settings and click on that you can actually either use a setting that works for you or you can create a, a custom setting so in here and it can be a little hard to find they're not alphabetical but it seems like they go by the weight of the um, pressure so I've got <clears throat> my can setting at 25 or I'm sorry, 325. So I have my aluminum soda can, but I entered this, I created this. So I have it at 325, I want it to go over it twice, and I use the fine point blade. And I can edit those settings if I'm struggling, if it's not cutting through all the way or something. Down at the bottom, you can add a new material. So you would click that, name it whatever you want, So I'm going to call this soda can example and save it. You have to save it first. Then you can come up here and do whatever you want. I'm going to bring this where you can see it better. Now you can come up and do whatever you want. So I can leave it at 175 or I can use this line to adjust it. And I can go all the way up to 350. The off means it'll cut once, but you can also have it go over it twice or even three times, four times. You know, twice this seems to be enough. And then I like the fine point blade with this. The heavy duty blade <clears throat> cuts really well, but almost too well. It almost cuts, it will cut all the way through. And I actually found that by scoring it, so to speak, and not quite cutting all the way through, that the lines are better, you don't get waves and ripples, and you don't mess up your machine. So that's what I've been doing. And once you set your settings for your aluminum cans, you can click save. Now they have aluminum but it's just foil so I went ahead and saved that setting and now that's in here also and I should be able to see that on my list and again I just look at the weights here and that seems to be where I find it. Yep, soda can example because I brought it to 350 is right here but actually what's been working for me is this 325 so aluminum soda can 325 Go over it twice, use your fine point blade. That's the settings I've been working with. And then you try that out, and if it's not working for you, you can come in and click on edit and adjust those settings. Okay, so enough about material settings. Let's get out of this. All right, so now once you've done that, also click the little star next to it, and then it'll be in your favorites, and then you can just come and find it really easily instead of having to look around for it. So I click on my setting and that's all ready to go and now I everything else is going to be on the machine itself okay so here we are at the machine and I've got my mat that we did in the first beginning of the video all set up with the aluminum it's taped right at that one inch line right here and right at the one inch line right here so we should be just fine to go ahead and cut 
my machine's asking me to go ahead and load the mat. So I'm going to push the button and load that mat. I do have just my fine point blade in. And I have been giving this fine point blade quite the workout. So we'll see how well it does. I've been playing with it a lot. Okay, my Cricut button is ready for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and we'll cut away. So it's going over it a second time. Ooh, looks like it's actually cutting through. That's great. It doesn't always do that. When I unpeel this and pull it off, I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, go ahead and unload. And this will continue to flash. Well, actually it's not, yeah. This will continue to flash until you go back to your machine or back to your computer and tell it that you're finished. It will expect that you wanna create another one and another one. So if you're creating multiples, that's great. So this came out really nice. Now this tape, let's see here. Let's see which ones are on top. Um, oops, if you don't tear it completely, it, you can actually reuse it. And that comes in handy when you're running a bunch of these. It doesn't, it holds up really well. So I will save that piece for another cut. Save that piece for another cut. And just stick them on the side of my workspace. And I'll save that one for another cut. Okay, I'm sorry, you couldn't see me. I was just pulling the tape off of there. All right, let's get that mat out of our way. So this is to be expected. The cut, the settings that I have on here, cut this out. But it doesn't look cut out, does it? It looks like it's still all one piece. There's a reason for that. When you cut it too deeply, it will sometimes wrinkle like it actually cut through right here and it did okay but sometimes when it cuts all the way through it actually kind of wrinkles those edges and it does it's not what i want um, it cut all the way through right here on this little propeller portion too which i think in that case is going to help me out but watch this if i just pop this and wiggle it around a little bit it just comes right off So you can wiggle it back and forth. And it's interesting that after it's gone through the Cricut, these edges can be a little sharp and ripply, but they're not as bad to work with as the initial raw cuts. So see that? Just a little wiggle back and forth, and that line comes out great. And trust me, that it might not seem like something you want to have happen, but it's better. I've had pieces where I went with the deep cut blades and it cut all the way through and the pieces were getting up into my machine. You know, it really scared me. I, I definitely don't want to break my machine making this kind of a project. So keep your settings. If you want them just a little deeper, you can take that 325 and move it up to 326, 7, 8, 30, you know, up to about 350 is as high as the machine will let you go with a fine point blade. So you could try taking it to the max. I haven't. I played with lots of different settings, and I don't think that I tried that one. Um, okay, there's part one. We'll discard that. And then same thing. I've already got that delicate little bit of the propeller out of there, I think. And just wiggle it around. So you can do this with fairly delicate, I picked this particular file to show you that this had a lot of lines and a lot of detail, not ultra tiny except for that propeller, that was pretty tiny, and that came out just fine. Now you also have two components here. You can use this, I want to use this on the front of a card, but you have this little plane that you can use on something else, one of your scrapbooks or something. But the next step on these, this whole 
process is I'm going to actually throw them in my embossing machine. So stay tuned for video number three because I'm going to do some embossing and I'm also going to show you that you can cut these out with your die cuts on your, um, uh, I keep calling it an embossing machine, but on your die cutting machine. So hang on out with me. We're going to go on to step number three.